talk about three tools. Your anvil, your hammer, and your tongs. Now let's talk about another situation that comes up with our workbench, our anvil. And that is the proper height. A rule of thumb in choosing the proper height on your anvil is for you to stand next to your anvil. Don't, don't stretch, just relax, stand straight, and drop your arm. When your knuckles fall right on the top, right on the face, that is your comfortable height of working. Now we've chosen the height of our anvil. Pick that. Now let's go on to the next tool, and that is the hammer. The handle must fit comfortably in your hand. When I put my thumb on the top of the handle, where it rests, this is the direction. The thumb guides the hammer through the movement, irregardless of whether the hammer is working straight or slightly turned. It always sits on top. When it sits on top, and with a very loose grip, I can hold that hammer and I have a gap between the palm of my hand and my fingers. A slight gap. The slight gap meaning uh, about a quarter of an inch. When this gap varies one way or the other, whether it gets too narrow and allows the fingers to make contact with the palm, or it gets too wide and the gap widens, maybe out to a half inch, maybe sometimes more, depending on the, the thickness of the handle. Either of these two variations, either heavier or narrower, these two variations cause you to have to grip the handle to control it. And that's not what you want. Anytime that you will have to grip hard on the handle in the movement. You start to do damage to your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder. Because of the concussion that's occurring through here and the stiffness of your arm. That is why you want this to lock in on your fingers, lock in on your thumb. The grip is extremely loose so that that vibration that comes off of there, can be absorbed by the handle and does not transmit up through your arm. So remember that, that's very, very important. The grip is very, very loose. There's an old saying that irregardless of where you are when working with this hammer, whether you are hitting or you are in the arc coming up, wherever that movement is, someone should be able to walk up and snatch the hammer from your hand. That's your grip. No more than that. Now I want to talk about the third and final tool, the tongs. Your tongs must fit the stock that you're going to work. If we place a piece of the material that we want, and we put that in the jaws of the tongue. We should not be able to see any daylight. Between the jaw of the tongue and the stock we're working. Those two match. But also what we want to see is that the, the reins are parallel. And as we were talking about in the hammer. The distance between the two reins must have that same comfort zone in the hand. Your hand must be able to fit around those tongs comfortably. If they're too narrow, the same thing occurs. You have to grip the tongs to just try and control them. If the handles get too wide, and you have to stretch to get around them, the same thing occurs. You have to squeeze to try and maintain. So you want to find 
that comfort zone, just as in your hammer handle, that fits your hand. Another thing that we want to talk about with the tongs is the length of those reins. I have three tongs here, all 5 sixteenths. But note the difference in the length of the reins. Okay, this is very, very important. When we are going to start working with these tongs, we are going to find a stance behind the animal. If the tongs are too long, they will interfere with our body. We don't want that either. So we want to find a comfort range that the tongs can pass between our body and the anvil and allow us to do the work and not interfere with the body. Whatever that distance is, is how you set your tongs, whether it be shorter or longer. The longer the tongs, the further away from the work you become. So your, the length of the rein dictates where you stand behind the end. If your tongs, place, when placed onto the work, and you find that you have a gap in between the two, between the steel or the material that you're going to be holding and the jaw of your tongue. You need to adjust this. Tongs are usually made out of some sort of spring steel. That allows them to have that resilience to be able to squeeze and spring back. So do not hit your tongs when they're cold. Put the tong in the fire and heat up this area. If all we need is the adjustment on the jaws, just heat up the jaws. Find a piece of material that you want to set it for, place it in there, set only the jaws on the anvil, and tap. Tap on this side, tap on that side. Check again. Check your gap. If it's still there, set again. So you can work it down to where you see no daylight between there. Then, don't quench the tongue to cool it off. Simply set it off to the side and allow it to air cool. Let's say that not only are the jaws not matching, but also the reins are too far apart. Same situation. Take a longer heat so that you get a heat back into this area behind the, the rivet. Now I'll take the proper stock that you're going to put in there. Not only set the jaw, if the heat is even on this branch and this branch, you can simply squeeze the, the reins together to bring them to the desired width. Or maybe you want to set it right here on the horn and tap right there and that will bring that rein down. Flip, tap that rein down. That'll keep the reins parallel. The rivet. A rivet that binds when opened and does not allow the tongue to move means that that rivet is cammed or oblonged inside. The rivet should move freely and allow the tong rein to move back and forth without binding up. When a, when a rivet starts to do this, and bind up and stick, there is nothing that you can do to that rivet to fix it. It's time to take that rivet out and put in a new rivet. It's merely grinding off one face, popping that out, placing a new rivet in. <laughs>